It isn't just runners here in Colorado getting ready for the Boulder Boulder. Members of the U.S. military take part in satellite races around the world. They get T-shirts and bibs, just like the runners here in Boulder. The first satellite races were organized back in 2007. One was in Kuwait, the other aboard the USS Nimitz, where the runners used treadmills. Since then, more than 2,500 service members have taken part in the Boulder Boulder through these satellite races. At the end of the race, 93-year-old Stuart Boone will once again play the national anthem during the Memorial Day tribute. A survivor of the Battle of the Bulge, Boone has volunteered to play taps at the funerals of more than 1,000 service veterans. And those fallen service members are what Memorial Day is all about. Ask anyone who has lost a friend or a loved one or family member to battle, and they will tell you not a day goes by they don't think about that person. Sally Mamdu traveled to Southern Colorado to speak with a retired Delta Force Squadron commander who knows the reality of battle firsthand. The sounds of the water falling in retired Army Colonel Lee Van Arsdale's backyard is his spot of solitude. I enjoy this more than your average person would. For him, the serenity here is much different than the streets of Mogadishu, Somalia, 22 years ago. There was firing going on almost from the first second that we landed there. It, it was a total mess. From the Joint Operations Center on October 3rd, 1993, Lieutenant Colonel of the time, Van Arsdale, closely watched Operation Gothic Serpent unfold. Many would come to know it from the movie Black Hawk Down. We got two wounded and we got both the pilots dead. In the chopper. We knew we were going into a hornet's nest, which is all the more reason why you get in and out as quickly as possible. And that they did. Based on little intelligence, Task Force Ranger captured two of Muhammad Farah Hadid's lieutenants. A group of Pakistani peacekeepers were ambushed and massacred in the streets of Mogadishu by Hadid's Habergator militia. And to get to Hadid to prevent him from killing more people trying to end the famine he caused, the U.S. found the people he relied on. But the successful mission is often haunted by these images. What's been lost in the, in the pages of history is that was a successful mission. We did what we sent out to do. Don't confuse a tragic loss of life with mission success. And what Van Arsdale says happened next to secure the location of the two out of the five crash sites defined the saying, comrades in arms. They did everything that they needed to do to bring that helicopter down in such a manner that the people in the back lived. But in so doing, they gave up their own lives. The heroic actions of both pilot Cliff Walcott and co-pilot Donovan Briley helped save the lives of four Delta Force snipers. A mile away, another selfless act. Outnumbered by thousands of militia swarming to the second crash site, Gary Gordon and Randy Sugart kept on firing back till their last breath. Their fight helped save pilot Michael Durant. And as the 17-hour long battle went into the dark, Van Arsdale went to one of the crash sites to ensure soldiers don't get confused and kill each other. Eventually, all soldiers were picked up and brought back to base. His efforts that day earned him a silver star and a purple heart. But he says the two heroes aren't here to tell their part. That's Randy Shugart and that's Gary Gordon. They, they were awarded the Medal of Honor. Today, their faces along with others who fought selflessly that day. That picture just happened to capture three guys in the squadron that all lost their lives. Are on his wall as a daily reminder of a mission well done. For me, every day is Memorial Day and every day is Veterans Day. So there, there's not a lot of time that I don't think of them. 